Hey guys, this is J.H. Reynolds, author of the Monster Trade book series. And uh, I was supposed to be having a Facebook Live session this morning, but I'm having technical difficulties with Facebook. So I'm recording this video and I will upload it later. I've received hundreds of questions the past few months about the Monster Street series and the writing process in general. And I'll be answering those over the next few minutes, maybe 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. Next question is from Gordon Elementary School in Midlothian, Virginia. And the, the question is, what is your favorite part of being an author? And my favorite thing is sitting down every morning with my ET cup and you know, creating worlds, creating uh, things that, that don't exist. Dude, I can't imagine anything else in the world I would rather be doing every day than sitting down at my desk and creating worlds. Next question is from Allison at AS Elementary in Irving, Texas. Her question is, what's a spooky story that has been your favorite? Uh, my favorite scary book when I was in elementary school was Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Uh, the illustrations especially were so spooky. Uh, I can remember sitting in my room with a flashlight and turning the pages and just feeling chills up my spine. The next question is from Audubon Elementary in Owensboro, Kentucky. And they ask, how do you come up with character names? My favorite place to get names is in graveyards. I love taking walks in graveyards. And I've gotten a lot of names from, from tombstones. Uh, next question is from Audubon Elementary in Owensboro, Kentucky. About how long does it take you to write one book? It depends. Uh, this book, the first book in the Monster Street series, I wrote off and on over about six years. I'd write a draft, put it away, work on something else. I might pull it back down six months or a year later, do a draft, put it away. Off and on. Uh, the second book, I think I had like eight weeks to write a draft. Uh, the draft, that, you know, I think I had one revision, something like that. Uh, same with, with Carnival. Next question is from Cadence at Joanna Woodson Elementary in Joanna, South Carolina. And she asked, do you write on paper or do you type? Good question. I do all my outlining on paper. I have to be intimate with what I'm, when I'm putting all the puzzle pieces together, I have to do it with a pen and paper. But I do all my drafting of the manuscript on the computer. Next question is from Bill Burden Elementary in Liberty Hill, Texas. Do you limit how many pages you do in a book? I don't think about the pages, uh, really. That's a good question. Uh, I think about word count. Word count is a big, big thing in the publishing world. You have to hit a specific word count for a specific market. So the Monster Street books range from about 20,000 words to 24,000 words, I, I believe. This one's right at about 20,000 words. And I think one of these is like is about 24,000 words or maybe the fourth book is 24,000. So it ranges between those. And that's on the low end of the word count for middle grade books. Uh, middle grade goes up to you know, 50,000, 60,000 words. Next question is from Colin in Austin at Hyde Elementary School in Clear Creek ISD. And they wrote, I noticed that one of your books is dedicated to a childhood friend. Did you include any of your memories or real names in your books? The Halloweeners is dedicated to my childhood friend, Clay Rodman, who was my best friend in the neighborhood where I grew up. Uh, you know, every day after school, I was at, I rode my bike to his house or he came to my house or I'd, his house was about 50 yards away if we jumped a fence. So I would sometimes go up and jump over a neighbor's fence and be in Clay's backyard. And so he's he's the guy I spent so much of my childhood with. And we had this one great Halloween night uh, where we both dressed up as Dracula. And uh, I wanted to sort of write something that kind of immortalized that night and that, that, that friendship. And the main character of the Halloweeners is named Fisher, who was the name of another one of our friends in our neighborhood. Next question is from Scotts Creek School in Silva, North Carolina. The question is, how many times do you revise your work before sending it in to be published? And what does the process look like? If I'm on a deadline, it's, it's very quick. So if I have eight weeks or somewhere around there to write a draft, then I have to sit down, outline real quick, come up with the character names and the story, 
write a draft, try to maybe do one, two drafts, turn it in to my editor, they'll send back feedback. I do one big revision and send it back. And that's pretty much it. We might change a, a couple little things, but the when writing on a deadline, it's like the second or third draft of the story that, that is going to print. And then of course you do copy editing. But uh, it's it's an interesting process. Writing on a deadline is a, a different process than if you're just writing on your own. Next question is from Madison in fifth grade at Southington School in Southington, Connecticut. Madison asked, did you ever work with a mentor author? Someone that I admired in the business that I uh, was Ray Bradbury and I sent him a letter in, when I was in my mid twenties writing short stories and that kind of thing. And I sent him a letter on Halloween night uh, one year and five days later I received a phone call from him and it was like, it was one of the best moments of my life. Uh, but we shared about a dozen phone conversations over the course of the next few years before he passed away. And he, he read some of my short stories and gave feedback, some poetry uh, he was just, he was such a huge inspiration to me at that time. And it gave me fuel that lasted over the next decade of writing and trying to, to, to break into the, uh, uh publishing world. And so I, I would say Ray Bradbury was a very important mentor and Ray Bradbury wrote Fahrenheit 451, something wicked this way comes. You'll probably read Fahrenheit 451 in junior high or high school. Next question is from Newbridge elementary in Ogden, Utah. And the question is, do you do any research for your books? Uh, good question. So for Monster Street, there wasn't a whole lot of research to be done. I'm just making up uh, these scenes with, with kids and scary situations. But for the first book, The Boy Who Cried a Werewolf, I did, uh, I did some research on werewolves and werewolf lore and the history of, you know, werewolf stories and so i did do a little bit of research on that and for carnival i did a little bit of research for uh carnivals and how carnivals work and i interviewed uh a carny and got some really interesting information from a carny a carny is a person that works at a carnival and travels around with a carnival and he had grown up uh in a carnival family so he grew up kind of migrating from place to place and i, I got some really interesting information from him. I don't know how much of it made it into the story, but it helped me envision what that, that world and that life behind the scenes would be like. Uh, research, you know, just, it, it's like a scavenger hunt. So you find one piece of information that leads you to another piece of information and another piece of information, and it's so much fun. But the next question is from Scott's Creek, Scott's Creek School in Silva, North Carolina. And the question is, what is your favorite scary movie? When I was a teenager, my favorite scary movie was Scream. It came out when I was 15. I remember it being one of the most fun uh, theater experiences I've ever had. Just a packed theater full of teenagers throwing popcorn and this spooky fun movie. I, I used to watch a lot of uh, horror films uh, just because it was a really interesting genre. You dealt with a lot of interesting metaphors in horror if it's done right i don't i haven't watched much at all since i've had kids you know you you become so much more aware of the, the bad things that can happen in the world when you're you're trying to make sure your kids are protected uh but as far as family films the monster squad is my all-time favorite uh monster monster movie and then you know monster house uh, Hocus Pocus, if you consider that a spooky movie. There's there's some great family uh, films. Mr. Boogity was one of my, it was this interesting one. I remember uh, watching in third grade. It had this great mix of comedy and horror uh, for elementary school kids. So go watch Mr. Boogity and Bride of Boogity. They were fun movies uh, on the Disney Channel back in the day. I think it's on Disney Plus now. Next question is from Shrewsbury Borough School in New Jersey. And the question is, do you believe that real, do you believe that monsters are real? And I think there are real monsters in the world, yes, but they're usually people who have had scary or uh, unfortunate things happen to them and to turn them into to that. And so, but I also believe in happy endings. So I think that sometimes a little, you know, fairy dust or, or love can transform 
those monsters back into happy people again or into balanced people. Uh, next question is, what did you have to do to be an author? Did you need any specific schooling? And that's from Newbridge Elementary in Ogden, Utah. That was the first question I ever asked those authors of Maximi and the Time Machine. When I wrote them that letter in fifth grade, I asked them, what do I need to major in in college when I grow up? And they came back and said that, you know, one of them had majored in history and the other one had majored in some kind of science, I believe. And they said, it doesn't matter. You just need to be writing and, and follow your interests. And I did end up going to school for writing. I, I went to some college and then I moved to New York City and I, I was doing all kinds of writing like a solitary hermit in Manhattan uh, in my early 20s, it, mainly with screenplays. And I decided I want, this is what I want to do. Absolutely, I can't do anything else. And I went back, finished college as a writing major. And uh, so I did actually go to school for writing and I found it beneficial mainly because of writing workshops where you're interacting with other writers and, and learning from their work, you know, helping them figure out how to make their work better. They're trying to help you make your work better and you learn a lot through that process. And uh, I was in a lot of different writing groups and I think that's where I learned the most. If you really are a writer, then no one's gonna be able to talk you out of it. It's something you feel inside of you that you just have to do. I, you have to express these things or, or capture these things in your imagination and put them on paper. It's just this uh, impulse. Let's see, next question is from Joseph at AS Elementary in Irving, Texas. And he asks, have you ever met R.L. Stein? What's he like? And I haven't met R.L. Stein. I have emailed with him. Uh, he was very kind and read the first two Monster Street books. And uh, they put, he gave some feedback and they put his little blurb here on the front and on the back of the uh, Monster Street book. So I sent him an email uh, thanking him. I sent the email through my editor at Harper Collins to R.L. Stein thanking him for you know doing that because it was one of the greatest moments of my life when I received that uh, blurb from R.L. Stein it was like this huge moment of validation of this long journey uh, writing in a very similar genre uh, obviously to, to his Goosebumps series and then having you know the master himself say oh I, lo I love this I want to live on Monster Street that uh, was a great moment. And he emailed back. Uh, so I emailed him a couple times. And, and um, we have emailed. I hope to get to shake his hand in person someday. So let's see. Next question is from Lincoln at Joanna Woodson Elementary in Joanna, South Carolina. Are you planning to make a movie of your books? Uh, film agent at United Town Agency in L.A. Has matched it up with a producer that is now in, it's in development. But who knows if that'll ever happen i don't think it will be movies i think it would be a tv series if it if it does happen and so fingers crossed that'd be a lot of fun to have a monster street series to watch especially especially around halloween this next question is from mckenzie at hyde elementary in clear creek isd and her question is have your kids read your books what do they think of you being an author they haven't read the books they're about to turn two and four but they're very aware of, uh, at least the, my oldest is very aware of what's going on. And she loves going to the book signings and, and giving out candy. Like people are trick-or-treating at the book signing. And uh, she uh, she's very enthusiastic and such a, a cheerleader. It's It's been a lot of fun to get to share that experience with her. Next question is, which Monster Street book is your favorite? And that's a good question. It's hard to choose a favorite. It's kind of like choosing a favorite child. But if I had to choose one to tell anyone to read, uh, it's a hard one. I, I really like Carnival. I like the, the themes and the, the metaphors and the, the allegory of the story a lot. Um, that's probably my favorites. But this one is a lot of fun to read out loud. If a classroom is ever going to read one of them, I think this is a, a fun read aloud. Um, Carnival is quite a bit scarier than these first two, in my opinion. This one is from Ira ISD in Ira, Texas. Which book was the hardest for you to write? 
interesting question. Probably the Halloweeners, only because it was the first book I'd, I'd ever written on a really tight deadline. I think I had eight weeks to, to outline it and turn a draft into my editor. And then I got to do one revision and then turned it in. And I remember him coming back and be like, all right, we're, we're going to go ahead and send it to copy editing. I was like, wait, what? That's it? I thought I had like five or seven more drafts. And so it's like, it was, it was a learning experience for me to realize, whoa, that's really, you just have this small amount of time. You can't just keep going back and revising and polishing every sentence in the story. Ironically, Carnival was probably the easiest for me to write. I've been taking notes on it for about seven years. And even if most of the notes never made it into the story, I've been living in my mind. Anytime I thought about the story, I kind of had a, an idea of the tone I wanted for it. So that one I wrote pretty quickly. What is your writing process like from start to finish? That is from Jude at Hyde Elementary in Clear Creek ISD. I'll get to know the characters a little bit, do a rough sketch outline, come back to the characters, tighten them up a little bit of exactly what they're going to be like, go to another outline, maybe do some more tweaking with the characters, another outline, another outline. And after the outline's finished, I then go start drafting. And I feel like I've done all the real hard work in the outlining, trying to figure out how the story's gonna to fit together, how everything's gonna to piece together. And so it's easy, easier for me from then on out to just sit down for a couple hours and oh, here's a draft of a chapter. And then it's just about going back and revising and, and making sure everything's gonna stay polished. The next question is from Cassie at Trivium Academy in Dallas-Fort Worth area. And her question is, what do you do when you get stuck and can't come up with an idea? If I ever am trying to solve a story problem, if there's something I've got to figure out how it's going to fit, I go pace. I'll go walk back and forth in my study or out on the porch or outside, and I'll just think through it. And it, eventually, my mind, I think any any creative mind, it just solves it eventually. I've never run into a story problem that I couldn't solve. Uh, at some point so you just have to have trust and faith that if you keep pondering it and you keep thinking through the, the possibilities you're going to arrive at a conclusion even if it seems like a really hard story problem also tell kids when I go to schools that they never have to run out of ideas because of one question it's the most powerful question in the universe and the question is what if if you bring out what if that question it will lead you to an infinite amount of other other pathways of thought uh, next question is from Gordon Elementary in Midlothian, Virginia. What is your favorite book? Uh, if you're in elementary school, my favorite book when I was a, a small child was Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. Uh, but in my adult life, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Uh, it's probably, if I had to choose one, that, that would probably be it. Uh, my all-time favorite story, it's not really a novel, it's more of a novella is a, a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Next question is, if you can meet one famous author, who would you want to meet and why? Uh, living authors, probably J.K. Rowling. Uh, authors who lived before our time, probably Mark Twain, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Shakespeare. What is your favorite thing to do during free time? That's from Southington School in Southington, Connecticut. I love spending time with my family, but I'm also, um, I uh, love astronomy. We go to the observatory. We have telescopes at our house we, we use. Love music, piano, guitar, bagpipes. Uh, we just got my daughter her first harmonica last Christmas. So uh, karate as well. Love karate. And I love movies. So I love sneaking away to the movie theater. Next question, uh, what are you currently working on? Do you plan on writing another series? From Scotts Creek School in Silva, North Carolina asked uh, if you like time travel so much why didn't you include that in your writing and I am I it's actually in one of the two middle grade series actually it's in two of the middle grade series that that I have uh, you know that I'm kind of developing right now what words of encouragement do you have for young authors that's from Audubon Elementary in Owensboro Kentucky uh, there's a video on YouTube and my website that you can look at top five writing tips for kids make sure you're living a great story that's the most important thing you can do is make sure the story you're living is is a good one. But thank you guys. That's all for this uh, live session today. I appreciate all your thoughtful questions, and I hope to see you again soon. You can visit my website, J.H. Reynolds, for 
uh, more videos about Monster Street and the writing process. And much wonder to each of you, and I'll see you again soon.